Hello, I'm Diane Schumacher, and welcome to Dragon Slayer Update. This month, HCC men's and women's lacrosse are put to the test against the nation's best. Mary Lee Adams closes the show with a dragon close-up on standout defender Reese Williams. First up is men's lacrosse. Howard takes on Nassau, the number one team in the nation. Gary Williams anchors our coverage. Thanks, Diane. The Dragons have won seven straight entering the contest. Only two of those wins, however, came against winning teams. Howard has yet to impress against the elite JUCO programs. The Dragons were on the receiving end of a lopsided 15-2 loss to then number one Onondaga. Lacrosse analyst Mike Jones is with us for this top five showdown. Mike, what's it going to take for Howard to pull off this upset? The Dragons are going to need a big game out of their defense. Nassau's offense has proven that they can score from the attack position and the midfield, so it's going to take a solid team effort on defense. Offensively, the Dragons need to stick to their game plan and rely on their potent attack of Dagnan Leach, Curcio, and Beard. And then, as always, there's Austin Mitchell, who's going to score points. Nassau enters the game undefeated. The Lions are a battle-tested 8-0, and they're the lineal champs of Juco lacrosse after ending Onondaga's 107-game win streak. Nassau is less than 22 hours removed from a grinded-out overtime win at Essex. The Lions are looking to emerge from a weekend road trip with two top-five non-conference wins, cementing themselves as the nation's team to beat. Mike, what do you expect to see from Nassau? Well, Nassau's got to be confident. Being the number one team in the nation and ending Onondaga's record streak of wins, their midfield has a complete toolbox. They can dodge, feed, and score from long range. Plus, they have James Fork in an attack, who's leading the Lions in points. Howard and Nassau face off next. Let's go to the Dragon's Lair. First half, the Lions have an early 1-0 lead. Nassau's bringing their physical brand of lacrosse on a tough double-teaming ride. They just got a little too physical, and it cost them. 30-second holding penalty on James Forkin, his Howard's man-up unit. Dragons with a simple rotation on extra man, and they cash in when Nassau doesn't pick up the guy on the crease. Austin Mitchell gets going early. Dragons tie the game. 7.04 first quarter. Dragons just turned it over. Leading scorer James Forkin, working behind the cage, feeds Connor McAvoy. Nassau reclaims the lead. Forkin involved in both goals. Nassau just made a stop on defense. Here's Jack Pace. Going to his left, scores. Reyes doesn't take away the middle of the field, letting Nassau's midi sweep across the goal. Tough shot for the goalie to see because he's moving across the face of the goal. Second quarter now, another extra man opportunity for the Dragons. Kevin Curcio. Declan Winnery turns and burns it low. Howard's within one. That's the same extra man play as before. The shot just comes from a different place. Seven minutes till the half. Settled six on six situation. McAvoy against Paris Williams. Williams, tremendous work with his stick, strips him and wins the ground ball. Later in the possession, Austin Mitchell backs down the pole, ties the game. Austin Mitchell giving Nassau a taste of their own medicine with some physicality. 20 seconds till the half, McAvoy takes on the short stick, absorbs the contact, and puts it away on the run. Lions respond with a big body shot before halftime taking some win out of the underdog late in the second quarter. Second half now, settled six on six situation. Been a long possession for Nassau. Pace catches McAvoy in the middle of the field, scores. Nassau seems to be getting all of their scoring from the midfield. Nassau won the faceoff. Officials just hit him with a 30 second shot clock. Forkin at X. Up against short stick, Ronald Carney. Forkin, Mark Bowser comes up with the save. Howard down by two late in the third quarter. Mitchell up top, two Nassau poles up with him, Mike. One of the basic rules of lacrosse is if you're adjacent to the ball, to not go towards the ball. This is a textbook example of why, because it gets Mitchell double teamed. Referees are letting him play. There could have been a couple of flags thrown there against both teams, but none of them were. Fourth quarter now, Howard moving around the outside. Curcio, Scott Dagenleach. There's no need to throw a 35 yard pass with neither player moving. It's an easy pickoff for Nassau. Later in the Lions' possession, they've run a minute off the clock. Dragons' defense is slow to recover on the backside, so when Nassau forces a slide, there's no one there to cover the crease. We're playing five on five at the two unsportsmanlike conduct penalties. 11.53 remaining. Mitchell gets the ball up top. North-South dodge, burns the pole, scores! Austin doing what he does best, going straight for the goal. 
Nassau doesn't slide either. Nassau won the faceoff. Eletti fires. Bowser takes it in the face mask. Matanen secures it for Howard. Other end of the field, long possession for the Dragons were down to 7.50 on the clock. Mitchell draws the eyes of the defense, feeds Curcio. Thunderous rip from Curcio. Nassau's lead down to one. With Nassau playing back to back, looks like they're off their game a little bit. I would have expected more out of the number one team in the nation. The whole team seems slow to react, including the goalie. Lions managed to win the faceoff again. Seven minutes. Pace. Iledi. Peter Emery breaks it up with a long pole. Biz Reyes backs him up. Two dragons on the ground ball. Howard's defense is showing some good intensity and hustle. But Nassau is riding hard, Mike. Mutanen finally moves it ahead to Dragon Leech. 11 and orange, Austin Pinto making life hard on Dagon Leach. Dragons finally get a touch. Curcio glides onto the crease. Dagon Leach hits him. Curcio ties the game. Three goals in seven minutes for HCC. That's some good vision from Dagon Leach to find Curcio cutting around the crease. Matt Jun won the ensuing faceoff. Beard dodging above goal line extended. All American Nick Capuana is all over him. The shot is wide and is a race for possession. Dagon Leach and Curcio back it up for Howard. Later in the possession, Austin Mitchell, once again able to win his matchup. Here he comes. Mitchell gives Howard the lead. Again, Nassau doesn't slide to Mitchell until it's too late. 2.30 to play. Lions all of a sudden find themselves needing a goal to stay alive. They go to Forkin. Ambitious pass. He's unable to connect with Letty. Great play by Bowser behind the cage to keep the ball on the ground, giving his defense a chance to pick up the ball. Capuana takes it away from Beard. Big time play from the All-American close defenseman. Other end, 1-10 to play. Jack Pace, no, Bowser with the stick save. And this clear could decide the game. Dragons go to Williams. Long cross field bomb to Matanen. He goes down, but Matanen wins it back. Bounce pass to Trey Lundilius. Nassau's bringing all they've got on the ride. Emmanuel Nwana now takes the ball and motor past two Lions. 42 seconds. One goal lead for the Dragons. Huge mistake by Nwana. He's all alone behind the cage, but Mikey steps out of bounds. With 47 seconds left, you got to question the decision to not call a timeout as soon as they cleared the ball and stepped over the restraining line. 14 seconds. Forkin up against Matanen. This is it. Forkin hits it off to Aledi. Nassau ties the game. With just four seconds, Mike, Aledi comes up huge. The defensemen were ball watching and didn't see the cutter. It's just the same offense they've been running all day, just a little weave from the midfielders that Nassau has been running for years. Keep it up, Mike. Keep On to OT. Next team to score wins. Nassau won the faceoff. Jack Pace dodging positions himself for another long-range shot. Bowser denies him yet again. Mitchell draws the pole, heading for the box. Goes down, and he throws it away. Nassau would win the ground ball. Late in the possession, Iletti feeds McAvoy. Bowser, what a stop! Williams and Pace race to the sideline. Williams runs it out for Howard. Bowser steps up when it counts with a great save, and Williams with great hustle to run the shot out and get possession. Jackson Downs denied the middle by Griffin Barnathan. Winnery for the win. Fitzpatrick swallows it up. Poor shot selection by Winnery. Lions get it moving in transition. 44 seconds remaining in the first overtime. Dragons have only four defenders back. Barnathan joins the offense. Wide open. Barnathan with the game winner. Same shot from almost the same spot, but he didn't save at that time. A great back and forth game. Howard's close defense did a fantastic job but you have to give a lot of credit to Nassau's midfield, stepping up and doing all the scoring. Nassau still undefeated. Let's send it down to Matt Stovall. Mark, you were really playing uh, incredible out there today against the number one team in the country. How, what was your mindset coming into the game? Were you seeing the ball really well in the warm-ups? Um, yeah, I thought I struggled today, actually, but um, as a team, we played really well. My defense helped me out a lot, and uh, we did well, just not well enough today. Can you describe a little bit of the struggles that your offense was facing against Nassau's defense today? Um, I think that at the beginning of the game, it was almost like we didn't know that we could play that level. 
and then once we realized that we can play at that level, it just went. It, it, we we started balling out, um, and I think that it was all mental. Um, it wasn't X's and O's. It wasn't something you could you know draw up, but it was just a mentality. And once we figured out that mentality and we started getting really excited, um, the situation or the situations on offense, the the, the mishaps, they they went away. And I think that um, you know there were all, there were hiccups here and there uh, later on in the game as well. Of course, you're gonna have it with any game, but. Um, I think that it really did come down to a mentality, and I think that if we carry this on, this mentality that we have, um, that we played out today, I mean, I'm, I can't even, I can't even see, I can't even express what, what we're gonna, uh, what's gonna happen that rest of the season. It's speechless. It's gonna be great. So, just the, the, this is the best I've ever seen Howard Lacrosse play. I've been covering this team for how many years? So, at what moment did you really feel like you, you said the mentality change? What, yeah. At what moment did that happen? I think that was. When we tied it at three, I, 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 when we tied it at three, um, the bench went went nuts, and and and, and I, me and Reese actually talked about this pr before the game, and Scott, that like the the sideline was gonna was gonna be a huge was gonna be a huge role, and then when when our sideline started getting excited and jumping around, um, I knew, and I think that everyone else knew that like this is gonna be a ball game, this is gonna be a dog fight, and I think that. Uh, that was that was the moment really when we started tying it up, and then we got that one one goal lead. I think uh, put us over, and from then on it was just a out of body experience. <laughs> Gentlemen, it was great seeing you compete today. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you, sir. I appreciate you coming and filming. For Dragons Layer Update, I'm Matt Stovall. Next up for the Dragons, a road test against eight-time defending Region 20 champion CCBC Essex. The winner of this game all but locks up the number one seed in the Region 20 tournament. The Dragons have never won on the road at Essex. Howard has only beaten the Knights three times. All three of those wins were in Columbia. The cross analyst Mike Jones, the last head coach at Howard to beat Essex, is back for this Region 20 showdown. Mike, what do you think of Howard's chances? I think this is the Dragons' best chance in years to hand Essex their first loss in the region since we beat them in 2008. The Dragons have proved that they deserve to be in the mix with the top teams in the country. They have a complete team. They're good from the defense all the way through the attack. But it'll take a total team effort to hand the Knights a loss. CCBC Essex is 10-2 entering the contest. Essex is undefeated against Region 20 opponents over the last seven years. However, the Knights, like Howard, have had little success against the class of Juco Lacrosse. Essex is just a combined 1-11 and against Onondaga and Nassau dating back to 2013. Mike, what do you expect to see from Essex? The Knights have a lot on the line as well, already losing to the top two teams in the country. If they want to hang on to their number three ranking and Coach Burke's region win streak, they'll have to hold the Dragons' potent offense in check and break down their tough defense. I think we're in for a classic rivalry game between these two top teams. Essex is pretty balanced between their attack and their midfield. The one guy the Dragons really have to look out for is Derek Taylor. He's a sniper from the midfield position. Possession will be a key factor as well. The faceoff spot will play a key role in tonight's game. Howard and Essex battle it out for the region's number one seed. Let's go to the highlights. First quarter, Brandon O'Connell uses the pick. Blows by the short stick. Has the entire goal to look at. Essex takes the lead. Dragons turn it over. Here's Derek Taylor. Goes right into the heart of Howard's defense and finishes. Two times the same thing. The Dragons' defense is not doing a good job of taking away the middle of the field. Howard struggling to get going. An incomplete pass leads to a ground ball. You get a taste of what this game means to both teams. Physicality on full display early here in Baltimore as Brendan Nolan secures the possession for Essex. Here you have Beard beating his man topside for a relatively easy score. We've seen this before, Mike. Austin Mitchell up top looking to carve out a spot for himself in the middle of the field. Mitchell ties the game. Dragons respond to the early barrage by Essex. The Knights don't put a body on Austin Mitchell, and you can't stop him that way. Brendan Nolan, Dylan Dooley. Nolan's pick throws off the Dragons' short stick. Dooley denied by Mark Bowser. Later in the possession, Mitchell at X. Kevin Curcio sets the pick. James K stays with Mitchell. Mitchell, what a play, gives Howard the lead. Austin Mitchell on the invert. A quick release on the inside roll. Howard's defense just forced a turnover. Essex returns the favor. Derek Taylor's getting it done on both sides of the ball. He flies across midfield, ready to attack the unsettled situation. O'Connell now diving, stays out of the crease, and we're tied. 9-21 until the half. Knights put a pole on Jackson Downs, takes him for a ride. Downs with the southpaw rip. 
Dragons regain the lead, Mike. Downs with a laser on the low angle shot. Emmanuel Nwana now absorbs the reckless check and proceeds to burn James Case. Nwana ignites the Howard bench as the Dragons take a two goal lead. Nobody picks up Nwana off the clear and he just takes it to the goal. Essex took a timeout. Knights won the faceoff. Taylor increases his angle, lines up, and delivers a rip. That's a great shot by Derek Taylor. He pings the corner. Wasn't even bad defense, it was just a great shot. Ensuing draw, violation on Howard's Matt Jun. And the Knights take advantage. And just like that, Howard's lead is erased. Knights capitalize off the faceoff violation for a quick goal. Second half now, Matt LeCompte uses the pick up top, goes right, LeCompte turned away by Mike Bowser. Other end, Ronald Carney, Mitchell. Huge leg save keeps it out. Knights in transition. Derek Taylor, low to high snipe. Essex takes the lead. CCBC Essex won the next faceoff. Dylan Dooley dodging to his left. Scores, two goal lead for the Knights. Essex with four unanswered. Dragons need to play. Scott Dagenleach, Herschel gets open and just passes it to the back of the net. Simple backdoor cut, Knights get caught ball watching, and Curcio with a nice finish. Extra man opportunity for the Dragons, chance to tie the game. Dagen Leach overthrows Beard, man down defensive stand for Essex. 2.30 remaining in the third. After a Knights failed clear, Howard has another chance to tie it. Downs loses his man, Downs off the pipe. Crucial ground ball battle here. Devastating shot from Mitchell draws the flag. A one minute non-releasable illegal body check penalty. The Knights man up unit takes the field. Hidden ball trick behind the cage. Blake McDonald still has it and he feeds a wide open LeCompte for the point blank finish, Mike. Hidden ball trick didn't fool anybody, but the defense didn't pick up the man on the crease. Massive man down face off for Howard. West Rumpel wins the ground ball. Keegan Moen is going to be hit with a one minute slashing penalty after that slash to the helmet. Maybe the lights are getting to Bowser. He doesn't seem to be picking up the ball from long range like he was earlier. Eight minutes remaining in the game. Down, north, south, dodge, down the alley. Down! Again, nothing special from Downs, but he finds the net on a low angle shot. Knights won the ensuing faceoff. Six minutes to play. Dylan Dooley dodging, stops, retreats, and comes up with a demoralizing response. Makes it a three goal lead. Matt Jun won the faceoff, five minutes. Downs is denied the middle by LeCompte. Can't connect with Daniel Chu. It's rolling toward midfield. Luke Matanen, not keeping control of his stick, unnecessarily fouls Yule. With the flag down, Essex runs over a minute off the clock. 2.40 remaining, the Knights extra man offense looks to put this one away, Mike. Dragon's not moving fast enough on man down. Essex finished off Howard with three of the last four goals coming in extra man situation. The Knights win it 11 to seven. It's time for women's lacrosse. The reigning Maryland Juco co-champions renew their rivalry as Howard takes on Harford. Coach Ponchione's Dragons entered the game with a 5-0 record, hungry to avenge last year's costly loss to Harford in the regular season finale. Lacrosse analyst Mary Lee Adams is with us for this Region 20 contest. Mary Lee, what do you think of this year's Dragon squad? Well, Gary, Howard has a lot of momentum coming into this game, and they seem to be really gelling as a team. Their biggest challenge is going to be setting up their offense because they've been relying primarily on Rebecca Coughlin to take it to goal. Howard's defense needs to play tight defense and not rely on their sticks. They have to use their bodies, they have to be smart, and they have to have quick feet because Harford's fast, and they can't just rely on their sticks to do all their work for them. Coughlin's going to be difficult to cover, though, and I'm expecting another hat trick from her. Harford enters the game with a hardened 6-2 record. The Fighting Owls are the defending District B champs. They split the series last year with Howard and really derailed the Dragons' season in 2015 by beating Howard in that last meeting. Mary Lee, what do you expect to see from Harford? Harford has a really solid team, both on the offense and defense. Their stick skills are very strong, and they're going to be tough to cover. They know how to work the ball around the crease and set up plays on the offense. It's going to be a really physical and demanding game for both opponents. And it's going to come down to three things. Draw control, possession, and shot placement. 
they're going to need to make every shot count. The winner of this one controls the region. Let's go to the Dragon's Lair. First half, here's Cassidy Jones, quarterback in the Hartford offense, Mary Lee. Howard's defense is too slow. They're not staying on the attackers that are cutting in. Howard needs to keep their bodies in line with their sticks. Your sticks can't do all your work. Lauren Haggerty won the draw for the Fighting Owls. Daniel Hurley feeds Megan Arrow. 2 0 Hartford. After a Hartford turnover, here's Sylvia Kim operating from behind the cage. Kim hits Rebecca Coglin right in the stick, and it's a goal. Harford came up with another draw control. Here's Jones scanning the field. Howard needs to play tighter behind the crease and not let Harford get those passes off. They're letting them finish it every time. 13 minutes remaining in the half. Harford just made a stop on defense. Great goal by Harford. Haggerty beats the Howard defender. She's got a strong arm, and she's going to be trouble for Howard. Harford goes into the locker room with a 5-2 lead. Haggerty won the draw to open the second half, and Fighting Owls Mary Lee have won seven of their first nine draws. Jones works it behind the goal, switches to her left, looks like she's going to go for goal, but since she's triple covered, she makes the smart move by finding the open teammate, who easily puts it in the back of the net. 6-2 Harford, free position for Coglin. Nice bounce shot by Coglin. Howard really needed that. Ensuing draw, Haggerty going against Gannon Costello. Haggerty is keeping her body parallel and is using her full body strength to pop it up in Harford's favor. She's making it look effortless. Lauren Cavanaugh, feeling the pressure of Savannah Holt, gets the pass off to Megan Arrow, right on target to Brittany Minsky on the crease. Another assisted effort from Harford, Mary Lee. Both Harford attackers were wide open. Howard's making it easy for Harford to move the ball around and get the goal. Following a Harford turnover, here's Audrey Ford looking to jumpstart the Dragons. Ford with a high to low rip, Howard back within three. Dragons just had a goal waved off due to an illegal stick. Harford looking to cash in. Goalie Ellie Garvey breaks up the shot, but can't control the rebound, and it crosses the goal line. Tough break for Howard, but they need to prevent those shots from happening in the first place. Harford's doing a really good job of working their offense and finding the open lanes. Three minutes. Howard is down by four. Coglin with the ball on her stick. Coglin does a great job of switching to her left. She uses her feet to do a quick stutter step to fake out those two Hartford defenders and draws the foul. Free position for Coglin. Coglin keeps Howard in it with a crucial goal. But the story of the day, Mary Lee, draw controls. Hartford with a 13 4 advantage. Haggerty has a wider stance and it's giving her the advantage. Fighting Owls pick up a big win on the road. Let's send it down to Omid Hosseini. Harford put on quite a bit of a show defensively in the first half. What could you have done differently? We could have definitely recognized that they were being really aggressive. I think we were very timid at first, um, trying to go to goal. So we could have really um, spread it out and enforced the shot a little more. Um, other than that, like I think we were trying our best. We could have played, ran a little more plays. Um, but other than that, we really tried our best in the first half. You certainly made some great saves uh, towards the end. How did that feel? It felt good for me uh, personally, but I know that it doesn't count unless that ball goes into our defender stick and then to a midfielders and then into the back of the net. So even though a save is a save, it, it, it feels better to know when that save turns into a score. Now, Danielle, can you tell us, now that the season's it's slowly creeping towards the end, can you tell us uh, where does the team stand mentally? Yeah, I think we definitely came to this game a little cocky, coming off the Onondaga win. We're still talking about that. But, um, you know, we came out here a little lethargic. But moving forward, I think we know what we have to do, and we're going to get it done. Well, great effort out there, and great good luck on your next game. Thank you. For Dragons Let Update, I'm Omid Hosseini. Let's go to Mary Lee Adams for an all-new Dragon close-up. Many athletes dream of playing at the Division I collegiate level, but lacrosse star Paris Williams has made that dream a reality. And his hard work over the last two years at HCC is paying off in a big way. Paris came to HCC two years ago from North Carolina and quickly became a standout on the men's lacrosse team. Most athletes are recruited or hear about the program through word of mouth. But Paris has something else to thank for his interest in HCC, YouTube. It came from uh, me wanting to live out my dream to play Division One, so I knew I would have to come somewhere and play JUCO. 
and I looked up a, a video on YouTube of Essex and Howard, and I saw that video, and I saw that um, Howard had lost by one goal, and it was just like, you know, I wanted to play for either Essex or Howard. I'm just seeing how like beautiful the campus is and the area and the, how the academics is very well here. It just made me want to come here. So yeah, I chose to come to Howard. Paris credits his mother and grandmother for raising him with an amazing work ethic and for his love of being part of a team. But he also brings several other traits to the table that make him extremely valuable on the lacrosse field and in the classroom. He's very, very athletic. He's also very emotional plays with a tremendous amount of passion. He's arguably one of the best defensemen in junior college. He's definitely the kind of guy that's going to be on, um, always studying uh, for lacrosse, and I think that's, that's definitely going to be something that's going to help him a lot at the next level. Um, like I had coaches that I, I play with from two hours away from home that send me film and things that I can read about on defenders and everything. So I always have someone sending me something like to research on lacrosse because you can always get better in some way, some fashion. Paris and fellow teammate Austin Mitchell have created a very special bond throughout their time at HCC. Not only are they best friends, live together, and play on the same team, but they are both moving on to Division I programs in the fall. Austin will be staying in Maryland at UMBC, while Paris heads to Cleveland State in Ohio. So how has this friendship helped them get to where they're headed today? They kind of clicked last year, I, I think, and Austin's family, his mom and, and dad, have kind of taken Reese in. You know, and they egg each other on in practice. I mean, they're the two biggest guys on the team, and they compete against each other like brothers. I think that whenever he's he's playing down or I'm playing down, like we definitely are, the, we're the ones that come up to each other and tell him what tell us like to, you know, to start working harder, and and then we were we have. A, a mutual respect for that. You know, he kind of just took me and he, him and his family invited me to church one Sunday. And then ever since then, it just was a love thing between his family and mine. I just was kind of adopted into the family, if you must say. Finding the right college can be very stressful, especially when you add in playing for a Division I team on top of your academic aspirations. But Paris knew right away that Cleveland State was the right place for him. You could even say it was a gift. I actually committed um, on my birthday, which was the 29th of December, so. There were quite a few schools asking about Reese, but Cleveland State, they're a new program. They're going to start playing in 2017, spring of 2017. I just went there, I saw the city, saw the coaches, and I fell in love with it. Like the campus, the city environment is just, is just amazing. And I think the thing what I'm going to love most is just playing for Coach Sheridan. Coming from Denver and Princeton, that's pretty high as a coach so. My goal is for Reese to be able to step on the campus at Cleveland State and you know be a leader right away and be able to step in and, and contribute right away. I'd expect nothing less than you know greatness from, from him so I mean uh, I can see him doing really well. I'm excited for him. With Paris's talent and experience he's sure to be a standout at the next level and with him and Austin both going on to play at Division One programs HCC may not be the last field they find themselves competing on. For Dragon's Layer Update I'm Mary Lee Adams. For the latest highlights, go to youtube.com slash HCC Dragon Sports. Thanks for watching, and remember, go Dragons!